Hey guys, I'm Gwendolyn and this is Scott. Hey Gwen. Hey, thanks for coming in and talking about the Switch Teardown. So you guys tore this apart and tell us a little bit about how it went. Uh, overall, it went pretty well. It was a long day, but the switch is not too hard to take apart. Uh, some of the good parts is it's mainly held together by screws, which is better than adhesive. Uh, there are lots of modular components, so if something needs to be replaced, there's the potential to pull out something individually. Uh, some of the negatives, there is some adhesive. Uh, the display is held by adhesive, which is something that might scratch. And it's there's tri-point screws. In tri-point screws, that's like not a super common bit. But overall, it did all right. Okay, so it sounds like it did pretty good. What did it score? Overall, it did. It got an eight out of 10 on the repairability chart, which is pretty solid. What did we find in there that was pretty cool? Let's start with the console. Starting with the console, we found lots of modular components, which is a, a great thing for repairability. We found that they have uh, kind of a nice modular game reader and head, uh, audio jack that is pretty easy to remove. Oh. In addition to that, micro SD was also there also super easy to remove simple press connector that can be popped right out moving down the line they have a removable battery which is an upgrade from previous nintendo products it was just held in place by a little bit of adhesive uh, but also simple just you remove the jack or the jack the connector and it's pretty easy to pry on out which cool. is very helpful we pulled out the board to find some cool goodies in there uh, we found the nvidia what we're assuming is the tegra system on a chip which was likely custom made for nintendo and it was a uh, overall it was a pretty cool console to explore pretty easy to remove everything and we got a good peek inside. Let's talk about these Joy-Con controllers. I heard they're not the same inside. The Joy-Cons are not the same. That's we, so strange. It is a little different. We do have the left Joy-Con and then we also found that in the right Joy-Con there is an added NFC antenna and then there's also some IR hardware that it does separate it from the other the other Joy-Con controllers. So they are mm. in fact different. Uh, one of the cool things that both of them do have though is the HD Rumble Pack, which is identical to those found in the Oculus Touch controllers. And uh, they're, they're pretty cool pieces of hardware. So what is the Rumble Pack for? So the Rumble Pack is what generates those cool haptic feedback uh, responses. So crashing were, in Mario Kart. Crashing in Mario nice Kart, vibration. sword fighting, all that, all of that fun stuff. So uh, yeah, and, and they're pretty interesting. We did also rip one apart completely. Uh, yeah, yeah. So one of these things uh, that you could compare these two was maybe be the Taptic Engine and an iPhone, except one of the differences between this and the iPhone one is this actually does rotate about a different axis. So it shakes a little different than the Taptic Engine does. Interesting. But regardless, very cool hardware to find. So the last piece of the teardown and the last piece of this device is the dock, which looks very simple. What is, what's involved with this dock? Uh, not much. <laughs> it is simply a board in a box for the most part. It does provide, uh, this board does have a lot of different ports on it, including USB and HDMI. Uh, one of the interesting things we did find was there are two USB 2.0 ports on the board, which is what Nintendo told us, but then there's also a USB port on the back that one of our teardowners is pretty confident is a USB 3.0 yet Nintendo isn't quite advertising that, so we don't know if we'll maybe see that in a later software update or what, but an interesting find nevertheless. So since we published the teardown, we've gotten a couple of questions, and one of them, uh, one of our viewers mentioned that the flash memory looked like it could be removed. Can it be upgraded? I wish we could speak to that. It's proprietary information most likely, but they are not mistaken. It is incredibly easy to pop off this little bit of uh, flash memory. So whether or not we'll be able to upgrade it, it's kind of to be determined, but it's, it's pretty cool that it's this easy to remove. So hopefully down the line, it, it will learn something about it that it might actually be able to be upgraded. Yeah, Fingers we, had a, we had another person ask about um, this, the screen for the console. Um, we hear that it can be scratched. So I, there's been rumors as to what material the, the display is made out of, but they're also, people are finding that when they put the display into the dock, the dock actually might scratch their display, which is, yeah, that's a little bit of a problem and a little surprising. Uh, we'll see as time goes on if more and more people have that issue or if it's maybe a first run production thing. I don't know. So we have one more question and it's about the connectivity of these Joy-Con controllers. People are having a little bit of trouble with the left one. Can you talk about that a little bit? Right, right. So in the teardown, we did find that there are structural differences between the left Joy-Con and the right Joy-Con, uh, one of which was the NFC antenna. On the right Joy-Con controller, there is an actual, the antenna actually comes off of the board. It is like an extra component. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is not found in the left one. In the left one, the antenna is actually just built into the board. It's kind of hard to see, which, could be a reason why it's not working as well. So 
It's hard to say for sure if that's the, the main reason why people are having connectivity issues, but definitely possible and, and I, in my in my opinion, quite likely. Well, needless to say, this is a really fun device and it sounds like a pretty great one to take apart. It's not too shabby, yeah. Lots of screws, which we love to see at iFixit, even if they are tri-point, yeah. we do have bits for that, so. Minimal glue, it looks like, and we can upgrade things ourselves. Uh, that's that's the hope. Some of the things we're not sure, but it seems like there's potential for that. Very so. cool. Well, thanks for coming in and stopping by and showing me all these parts. Oh, absolutely, Gwen, it's always a pleasure. Awesome. If you haven't seen the full teardown, be sure to check it out on iFixit.com, and of course, you can always watch our little video on our channel. We'll see you next time.